the deep-seated hope of a dream becoming reality is the thing that drives us to continue on, to keep putting in the long days, to keep planning the big trips, to keep pressing through the adversity. And when that dream does become reality, it is one of the most significant moments in your life. All right, elk season has begun for my tag, but I've been running behind. Colton just got out from sheep hunting and it's been a busy fall. And now to make up for some time, I am flying down to meet my friend here. We're gonna hunt some country that I've never hunted before. And every, if you watch any of our videos, you know I love hunting new country. So I'm gonna head down there tonight. We're gonna go in tomorrow morning, not too early and get set up and really focus on the evening hunt tomorrow. Got about a week to get it done before I head out for Colorado. So we're gonna see what we can do. New country. I know there's big bulls in this country because I have picked up elk sheds in this country. So I'm excited about that, but it's gonna be steep. Uh, the plan is, is if I'm getting into elk, Colton's gonna bring the truck and horses down so we can pack it out. So this is what we're doing today. And I'm gonna head in, push me a safe flight. If you're watching this, I probably live. Clear the prop. One thing I love about elk hunting is the adventure can be as big or as small as you want to make it, but no matter how big or small it is, it never disappoints. You can find elk in the most remote reaches of the world, and you can find them out in fields. And one way or the other, either way that you're hunting them, it brings a huge reward. All right, it is October 17th today, I think. 18th, 17th or 18th, doesn't matter. It's elk season and we are hunting in a spot that looks really good for bulls. Some kind of breaksy country and burn. And these bulls should be pulling off of the cows about right now and starting to pull down a little bit out of the high country. A lot of pressure up here, a lot of people riding on the roads. So we're gonna kind of drop in and See what we can't turn up in here. I'm thinking this is gonna be a great spot. It's as beautiful as it gets. The leaves are all turning color. And Colton's gonna come down tomorrow. He just finished tagging out on his sheep. He did a couple days with his family. And he's gonna be headed down with the horses so that we can start packing elk once we start shooting the milk. Let's see what happens up here. now and we're getting into where I think the elk are. There's tracks everywhere starting to smell like them. A lot of bull tracks up here. We're gonna drop a little bit farther and then put our camp in and we'll start working these draws and getting out on the finger ridges and being able to glass the basins. It's actually pretty thick timber. Thicker than I thought it was gonna be. But when you get on the opposite ridge you can see pretty good so we're gonna use that to our advantage. It's not about what you don't have. It's not about what you don't have, it's about what you do. After walking most of the day, we finally found a good spot that we wanted to camp about as far away from the water as we could possibly get, but right on top of the elk. So I unloaded my pack and decided to head solo down into this canyon and look for elk. All right, we left our camp up on top. I'm headed down into this base and there's a lot of elk tracks moving around up here. And working down into this timber, so I'm gonna work this ridge. The wind is blowing straight ahead of me there where I'm going. 
which is why I'm going that way because I want to get on this ridge. Keep my wind here because I think these elk are in this basin over here. I'll show it to you in a minute. Let's see if we turn up. As I kept pressing down this ridge and into the basin, the elk activity just kept intensifying and getting better and better, and I was starting to get excited. I came across this bull bed and knew that I wasn't far behind. The way you can tell a bed is either a cow or a bull is if there's pee right in the middle of it, it's generally a bull bed. What you can't see in the video is I just stumbled into a nice six point bull at about 75 yards and he busted me and ran over to my left. Instead of running after him, I decided to take it real slow because I could hear some serious elk activity underneath me. And I know when you get in these big herds like this, oftentimes elk will run all over and it won't spook the whole herd. And sometimes you can get an extra opportunity if you just take it easy and you don't freak out. And so I started pressing down into the timber real slow, seeing if I could pick up any more elk. I am now right on top of this herd and I've seen three bulls but I just have this feeling because I can hear something down in there and I could hear a real growly bugle that there might be a bigger bull in the herd and so I let these couple six points walk hoping that I might churn up just a little bit bigger bull. Less than a minute after passing that last bull, I looked down and halfway between me and him, a big bull stepped out right behind this cow and I let him have it.
The woods absolutely erupted after I shot, and these elk had no idea where the shot came from, so they just started moving all over and ended up walking almost right over the top of me in one of the cooler experiences I've ever had post-shot like this. There's no doubt in my mind that that is the very biggest bull I've ever killed. I had a couple of six points. One of them I got on video. There was, or a couple of them I got on video. I had a couple of six points, and I was just like, I feel like there's a bigger bull here. I could just, I, could, I thought I heard him raking down in this brush down over here, and this cow came up. I mean, I blew him over. I hit him the first time, he just hunched up, and then I hit him again, and he just went, whoa, right down. I wish I had a video, man. Oh, it's gonna be okay, though. All sorts of cool action there. And you get the anticipation of seeing what I killed. Oh, I'm gonna soak this moment in for a second <clears throat> before I go look at this thing. <sighs> That's emotional. You hunt so hard your whole life, and then you finally kill a real giant. Holy cow. That's a true big bull experience right there. Oh Lord, thank you so much for that bull. Oh my gosh. What a tank. Oh my gosh, he's got a double. He's got all sorts of cool stuff going on here. I get solid Justin shooting. Oh my gosh, he's real cool. I have, man, I have struggled to kill a big, big bull. And this is a big bull. And I keep coming out here year after year and you just work and work and work and whether it's impatience or whatever it is, you end up not getting the bull that you're after sometimes or sometimes it just doesn't work out, right? But I've known for a long time that this day was gonna come. Like there's no doubt in my mind at all. This day was coming. And day after day goes by and you wanna see the end of your faith, right? Like the end of your faith. What, what's it gonna, 
what's it gonna be? What, how's it gonna be? What, what's that elk gonna look like? How, I wanna hold it, I wanna touch it, I wanna experience it, right? And, and I know it, I believe that I'm gonna get this elk one day. And then it finally comes, and man, what a reward it is. It just, I was reading 1 Peter chapter one this morning. And he talks about us believing, even though that we haven't seen Jesus with our eyes, we believe, and there's a result of that faith. There's a result of that faith, and the first result of that faith is an inexpressible joy. Rejoicing with inexpressible joy. So one of the byproducts, one of the fruit of just knowing, like with this help, I know I'm going to get a big bull. And so every day I step out the door, and I'm just so excited. Every time I go hunting, I'm just so excited because I know any one of these times is going to be the time that I get that big bull. And so I just have this joy all the time. That's the way it is with the Lord. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, our world is radically changed. He said he came to give life and to give it abundantly. And he says that in his presence is fullness of joy. And he tells us that, and he tells us all these amazing promises that he, if he is for us, who could ever stand against us? And all these incredible things that were more than conquerors through him, that he always leads us in triumph. Incredible things. And it results in this just total rejoicing all the time and you know it if you go out elk hunting you may not kill a big bull every time you may not kill something every time but the joy that you have hunting and that's the same as having faith in Jesus Christ is a joy but the second byproduct of faith he says and you'll receive the end of your faith which is the salvation of your soul so here's the cool thing about faith not only is the faith for the future, the salvation of our soul for eternity, faith affects us right now. It gives us joy, inexpressible joy in the moment. You can't, I can't even express the joy I have right now with this elk. Words would come up short. And if you've ever stood over an elk like this and you put in all the work and the years and the money and the time and the heartache and the suffering and the, oh, it's inexpressible. But I'm telling you right now, The second you give your life to Jesus Christ, it radically changes everything. It's inexpressible joy. I'd love to describe it to you, but it's indescribable. And if you've never experienced that, if you've never experienced this right here, what I'm experiencing, I'm telling you right now, this is incredible and I've looked forward to it for a long time. It doesn't even come close. It's when I gave my life to Jesus and the radical change then and every day since then. You have your ups and your downs and your bad days, but... Uh, I want to challenge you. If you want joy inexpressible, if you want salvation for your soul, you're never going to find it anywhere else. You're not going to find it in an elk. It comes and goes. House fires, they burn them down. You may never even kill an elk like this. You will find it in Jesus. I guarantee that. Jesus says, anyone who calls on me will be saved. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest for your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to Jesus. If you want to know more about the inexpressible joy found in Jesus. If you want to know more about just having a relationship with Jesus where you're on fire and you're just excited about life and even when the junk and the storms hit you, you just know this isn't it. This is just a chapter in the book and it's going to finish awesome. You may have a bad hunt here and there, but it's going to finish awesome. And man, if you want to know more about Jesus, go over to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com. Request a copy of The First Mile. I wrote it. It's a resource that'll tell you who God is, how to have a relationship with him, how to practically walk with him, why you need him, and how to have a relationship that will actually impact your life. And ah, My God made this right here. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to spend eternity with the guy, the God that made this right here. You want this right here, trust me. You want what I got with Jesus too. I got a heck of a life. Heck of a life. And God has a heck of a life for you. He says, I have, prom I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. God's not going to take anything from you. He's going to give. He's a giver.
I think my favorite part of hunting solo is how you just get to soak in the experience and it's just an intimate moment with just you, the Lord, and the animal. And you're sitting there and you're able to just praise God for all of his provision and everything and you work this animal up and it's a couple of hours that no one else will ever experience. It's something kind of sacred to it that it's yours and yours alone. That's what I love about hunting solo and working these animals up and this was just an incredibly special evening getting to work this bull up all by myself until well after dark. And oh, that's where I am down in this basin, 6,500 feet. All right, we ran into Jeremy and Justin over there. You, oh, see, you can't see Justin. So we got a couple extra pack meals for the bull. We thought we'd come up in here and pack them out to an easier spot for the horses.